Oh, uh, we're doing something a little bit different today. Welcome to, I guess, the pilot program for Achievement Analysis, where the goal is to examine a game's success via how well its fan base went through it. And while that may not seem possible, and one second as I have to cut out some of these windows here, Shark's not the only one with a lot of tabs, although I have many more, or he has many more than me. But each episode, we're going to try and look at how well a game has succeeded. And we're going to be examining it via the achievements. And the reason why is we're going to be able to use them as kind of a metric for how well a game was able to keep and retain the interests of its fans. And again, specifically fans. We're not talking about the number of reviews. We're not talking about how many accolades it earned, anything else along those lines. And if people like to suggest games for future shows, uh, please let me know. They have to be those that specifically have a lot of progression-based achievements. And I don't know how long this is actually going to take to go through. We could be done in 20 minutes. It could be an hour. Although I don't think we're going to hit that much. But since this is the first episode, I want to talk a bit about what we're focusing on for this. We're going to be uh, mainly dealing with progression-based achievements. Those that are earned over the course of playing through a game from start to the end of the story. We're not going to be so much focusing on like collectible achievements, weird achievements, post-game ones. We'll touch on them lightly. But the ones that we're going to focus on the most are those that primarily deal with, did the player beat level 1? Did they beat level 2? Did they get past a tough boss? Did they get some kind of special MacGuffin? Those kinds of questions. Because this is how we're going to see just how well a game managed to retain its audience. And in terms of our, kind of like our grading scheme for the show, 30% and up is considered a C. It's a passing grade. 40% and up is a B. 50% and up is an A. And any game that match retain more than 60% of its fan base, that gets an S rank, I guess, from us. And then, conversely, anything from 20 to 29% would be a D. 10 to 19% would be an F. And I guess, like, less than 10% would be an E, if we're using that as our grading scale. So, with all that said, uh, let me know what everyone thinks about this. I'm going to probably upload this recorded version very quickly. I don't want to do this like every few days or every week. I figure maybe like a once a month kind of deal. But let me know what you think in the comments below. And we are starting with Hollow Knight. And I chose this game for a very specific reason. Hollow Knight is one of the most celebrated indie games released in the last decade. It has earned high marks from a lot of people. It's considered, I think, one of the most quintessential Metroidvanias that was ever released. I believe this was a Kickstarter game as well. But with that said, there are people... Who, this game can also be very polarizing. I have some friends who swear by how much they can't stand to play Hollow Knight, that it just did not work for them at all. So, with Hollow Knight here, as I said, it is considered one of the most celebrated Metroidvanias of all time, but it's also very polarizing in terms of how well people really enjoyed it and what the progression rates mean. This is why I chose this game as Episode 1, because success or game design success is not about review score. It's not about the number of people who bought your game. It's about how many people managed to play through it and how far did they get. And this is why we can use achievements if they're set up. Some games, they're not set up that we can really look at them. Like if your game only has like three achievements, start the game, get 50% done, beat the game, we can't really analyze a game through that but let us get over here i'm just double checking to make sure that everyone can see it and again what we're focusing on is going to be our player base over here 
and what these achievements. Another reason why I chose Hollow Knight is that I have been in this game like four or five times, so I know all the pain points that I got to, and I also know what point uh, what pain points probably stop people from playing. So, Hollow Knight has a surprisingly high amount of churn right out of the gate. The very first achievement is Charm. Charm is, of course, to acquire one of the many charms or passive modifiers that you get in Hollow Knight. And you get this relatively early. I would imagine in the first, I don't know, maybe 20 to 35 minutes of play, you're going to get a charm. And as you can see right here with this number, which hopefully I can, no, it won't let me kind of highlight it, that's 74.9%. So what that tells us is 25.1% of everyone who played Hollow Knight or at least started the game basically quit after 20 minutes of playing this game. And I can tell you several reasons why, or at least a theory craft from what I played. The game features the Dark Souls style heal system, or you have to stand still and heal in order to recover, which, of course, while you're trying to do that, enemies can hit you, which may cause more damage. And several charms are introduced later in the game to try and alleviate this, such as quick heal, move while healing, or even just being able to get far enough away from the enemy and do it in the first place. But I always wonder how many people really like the kind of, you know, lockdown heal system of something like Hollow Knight or the Souls-like series. And that's a question for everyone watching this, whether it's live or recorded. What do you think about those kinds of systems? And do they, you know, help or hurt your play experience? Another thing I think right out of the gate that annoyed people was the lack of a map system. And for me, I am not a fan of games that don't have consistent mapping. It's one of the reasons why I don't like to play a lot of classic like RPG or open world style games that require everything to be done by pen and paper. And with Hollow Knight, you don't have easy mapping. You need to actually equip a charm to see your character on the, on the map itself. And then of course you have to buy the map from the little shopkeeper to get full mapping like that. And when you have a Metroidvania, specifically one that is very huge in terms of its game space, this can be very frustrating to deal with. And Hollow Knight is probably one of the larger Metroidvanias that I think came out in the last decade. You have a lot of territory to explore, a lot of backtracking, and a lot of fast travel you're going to need to unlock. And even then, you're going to have to kind of try and keep track of yourself unless you dedicate one of your precious charm slots in order to have easy mapping. And I would be very surprised that in a Silk Song, if they're going to keep that system. Because I feel like that, combined with kind of the overall difficulty of it, may have been a deal breaker for at least some of the 25.1% of people who quit Hollow Knight. I think masochism will kind of define as we get further down this list. So one of the big things about any Souls-like is the first true fight. Whether that is a uh, Ludic Skandir in Dark Souls 3, Father Gascone in Bloodborne, wherever that giant robot was in the Surge, and so on. Because this is kind of where the rubber meets the road. How many people are going to learn your game enough to beat the first official fight? Because this is where all the mechanics and all the moment-to-moment uh, -moment gameplay is going to come to a head. And either you're going to beat it and make progress, or you're not, and you're going to get stuck with it. And as you can see right here, we lost another, what, like, 
point eleven or two four eh, like almost like a little bit more than like close to like six percent of the fan base quit from here down to here. And the good thing is that this is kind of an acceptable mail churn. I would say if you lose anything more than like more than 10% of the player base from progression achievement to progression achievement, that's a bit of a problem. Now, with that said, it does mean that the kind of quote unquote like true fans or your hardcore fans really didn't start until we were at 68.8% of the total people who played it. And the False Knight, as kind of a level 1 or a, the first true battle in the game, wasn't really that hard. But with that said, getting to that point for a lot of people was certainly an ordeal. Now, the second real fight, and probably the one that really got a lot of people, at least starting out, would have been fighting Hornet. Hornet is more... It's a lot more faster and more reactive compared to the False Knight. And as you can see from here to here, we lost about, what, like 10, maybe like 11%, a little bit around there in terms of the fan base. And again, that is not good churn. Well, I would have rather have seen it go from like 68 to 64, 68 to 66. And what that tells us again is that as more and more people kind of moved into the quote-unquote real game of Hollow Knight, something wasn't meshing. The second area is known for having a lot of acid traps, a lot more tricky platforming compared to the first one. And I think for a lot of people who played Hollow Knight, there is a disconnect between the Metroidvania style of upgrades, getting more abilities, growing more powerful, and kind of the hardcore or at least expert level platforming that the game required of you. It didn't hit like Celeste levels of difficulty, but it was still very high, I think, compared to what people were expecting out of this kind of design. Now, again, Kind of completionist achievements here and here we don't really care about. Now as we keep going down, the kind of real opening of Hollow Knight comes after you beat the Soul Master. This is when you unlock the Dream Nail and you get your quest to defeat the three lords of the world. And as you can see, we lost a lot of people about well, right on the money of 17% just basically stopped going from area 2 to area 3. And this one I have I think a little clear idea of as to what happened. When you're moving from green path to kind of the actual capital, there is a lot of space to explore. This is where we get to kind of like that Metroidvania aspect of there's a really cool item or a really cool path, but you can't do it yet. You need to come back. And this is also where you unlock kind of like your first real bit of movement tech. And that is, of course, everyone's favorite, the double jump. And you're going to have to make use of it to do some fairly tricky platforming to get into the capital to begin with. And then it can be a very brutal gauntlet to get to the Soul Master. And again, we're seeing this churn of people who just are not enjoying it. Combat in Hollow Knight is very weird. It's more active compared to say something like a Mario game or like most 2D style games, but you're still like enemies get very attack spongy even with the upgrades and considering how much damage they can do and again how slow healing can be this is where I feel a lot of people started to get tired of the combat gameplay loop. And we can, again, kind of see that with this churn rate. Now, as we keep going down. Now, the back half of Hollow Knight is, 
where we kind of start to see things begin to stabilize. So as you can see, we're noticing that the churn rate is becoming more gradual. And this is what we want to see out of any video game, you know, going from 41 to 39, 39 to 38. We don't want to be seeing, literally starting at square one, 74 to 68 to 59 to then 42. So we can kind of assume that the true fans of Hollow Knight, the ones who are going to really stick with this game, would probably represent at least 42.7% of the people who bought it. Which, again, it's high, but we want these numbers to be higher. Now, as we go down, Dung Defender is, of course, I'm not sure if I get a demod for that. That is a boss fight in the sewer system. I forget if that is required or optional. But we can still see this gradual. Now, I know the Broken Vessel was one of the major lords, if I remember right. So 37.4% were good there. Again, we're not concerning ourselves with Enchanted and Grub Fiend, because those are more collectible style achievements. And most people, I think, who do collectible style ones are going to be the completionists. And there's a question for those of you watching live recorded. Are you more likely to go for 100% collection in the games that you play? Now, as we go down, we have the beast that is another uh, lore that you have to kill. And still, again, we're, we're kind of getting out of the C range of completion rates here. But the churn rate is optimal. I forget what proof of resolve is, to be honest with you. If anyone can let me know, let me know in the comments on that one. But we have more of the Watchers. Or actually, I don't... The Broken Vessel may have just been a boss fight, not a Lord. Because we can see 1, 2, 3 here. So we know that at least 32.5% cleared the three major bosses of Hollow Knight. Trial of the Conqueror, that's the arena fight, I believe. Open all, 29, Traitor. And again, these are just more specialty achievements. But as we get down here, this is still not what we want to see, especially out of a game that was so highly praised. That... We are now passing the, we're now into the D range in terms of rating of Hollow Knight. Keep going down. Now, Grand Performance, that is the, the achievement for the DLC, the uh, Circus Troop one. Which is kind of interesting that people did the DLC more than they actually finished Hollow Knight. If we keep going down... We have the Hollow Knight itself. So this is the achievement that you get for just being the game by itself. No additional endings, no super masochistic challenges. So 19.2% at least beat will be considered the final boss, but not the true final boss or the final final boss, as we say around here. So that would mean that... so. For what we're grading games on for this show, that is, going from start to end and seeing an ending, Hollow Knight would get an F. It's, you know, maybe an F plus D minus in terms of our scale here. Because again, we want to see for a passing grade at least 30% of the people to play it. But there are still more achievements to look at here. So as we keep going down, Dream No More. I need to double check these myself here for a second. I believe Dream No More is the achievement for getting the true ending. Or that could be for beating the White Palace. I am actually, I want to talk about this in a minute. But 
As we get down here, I'm surprised there should be an achievement for completing the White Palace. I'm wondering if that is purity or not. And I do wish more developers would actually like give the details for the achievements instead of hiding it. Now, Sealed Siblings, that is a specialty achievement for clearing the final boss and then trapping <laughs> a hornet in with you. But uh, let's go by Dream No More. I believe that is the one of the major. No, it is 0 to 100%. Anything higher than 60 gets an S rank. 50 and up is A. 40 and up is B. 30 and up is C. And then we go D, F, and E. And there are games that have managed to get an S rating. Now, whether or not they keep them is another story. So 15% of the player base cleared the White Palace and they beat the true final boss. Now, to be fair, the true final boss is definitely in a higher class in of itself. It is the boss that actually does two ticks of damage as opposed to one. It is a very painful fight. So 15% clearing, you know, the true finale is not that bad. Now, the Trial of the Fool or the Trial of the Masochist, I did clear that one. True. And that's actually a good point. No game will ever get 100%. That's why S rating is at 60% as opposed to 90 I don't think any game will actually ever get to 90% completion. Maybe a game will surprise me in one of these shows, but I highly doubt it. And that's, again, one of the reasons why I do this, or why I wanted to do this show. Well, you'll have to watch for a uh, future episode, then. You know, there's the uh, hook for people. What game got an S rating? What game, it may not even get in it, still have an S rating by the time we actually do it for one of these shows. But I want to actually stop here for a second. Because I find this one very interesting that 14.5 percent of the total fan base got 100 percent game completion now truth be told you can actually go above 100 percent in hollow knight especially with all the dlc stuff but the reason why i find this very surprising is that for a lot of games the 100 percent you know the true Grand Master Achievement, that's usually less than 10%. Sometimes it's less than 2% of the player base. So what we can kind of take from this is that even though Hollow Knight churned a lot of its fan base, and that it did overall end with, we could say, F plus D minus range in terms of its overall completion, it still attracted a good amount of hardcore people who were willing to see this game all the way through to the end and beyond. And I think a lot of that is the quality of the design. Like I said at the start of the show, Hollow Knight is very celebrated among Metroidvania fans. The people who played through this game and who got through, you know, all the way to the end and didn't quit, probably consider this to be one of the best examples of the genre. And for those of you who have played Hollow Knight and are watching this right now, I want to know, did you love Hollow Knight? Yes or no? And did you manage to beat the game? Because I'm curious to see again where opinions fall on this. So I think a lot, what we can kind of extrapolate for this is that a lot of people who found this game to be too difficult or got a lot of pain points quit within the first two hours of playing it. I would say on a casual play, if you've never played Hollow Knight before, you should realistically be able to beat, uh, where is it, Soul Master 
probably within two hours of play. Well, the thing again with the grading is that we can't do anything higher than 70%, because that would be, no game would ever get even close to an A if we did it like that. And again, that kind of speaks for how people play video games. That most people are not going to finish a game. And it's why, if I said A was, you know, 80%, this whole scale would be broken. Because every game would basically be, you know, in the F range. But, as we keep going down here, that... The game, for the people who stuck with it, they managed to succeed. And again, we are going to see some games that are over like 68 hours long that will get at least a B or an A. Now as we keep going down, these are again our kind of post-game as well as DLC achievements. 5.1% Oh, here we go. So this is the true uh, completionist achievement. So this is for somebody who really wants to see it. Hmm. Yeah, so then you would be in the 14.5% range, uh, Nikita. Let's see here. Uh, I don't know, it has to be about time played. Because time play can mean anything for any game. So does that mean that every RPG gets an F if people don't play it for 40 hours? Does every platformer get an A if they play it for 2 hours? Like, I think we need to go by progression. Because progression is what motivates somebody to keep going. And again, we have to look at this on a game-by-game -game basis, because every game and every genre is going to be different. And again, it's very tricky to do this as well. because not And like I said at the start, we won't be able to use every game for this show. Like, if your game just has, like, literally four achievements, it's, it's just not going to work. It has to be a game that we can track its progression. But... 3.7% for pure completion. This is what I normally see from people who go for the 100% achievement. But how long was that game? Like, if the game only takes... Like, I would actually expect that the game is 3 hours long. It's still... We will see, I think, on this show that even short games will have churn. And a lot of this churn that we're going that we're talking about is game design and UI and UX related. And I am very sure we're going to find games that can be beaten in an hour or two hours that maybe only 20% of the people will have actually have done it. And what we're what I'm hoping for is that we're going to see that games that have really solid core gameplay loops really on the ball UI UX are going to retain people through longer game experiences. Now as we keep going down, and again as we see down here, another reason why not every achievement is going to work is that stuff like Steel Soul and Steel Heart, that is Above and beyond what a normal fan will ever achieve. And good on the 2.5 and 2.1% who managed to get through that. And if any of you are watching this right now, live or recorded, let me know. And, you know, thumbs up to you. The longer the game, the more... Eh. But again, it's about your fans. And true fans are going to stick with a game longer. And it's why we see with every one, or what we're going to see in every one of these games, that there is a stabilizing point. It may actually, what we could do maybe is 
graded on the stabilizing point. When does the breakdown in churn stabilize? Actually, that's a that's an interesting point. Would for those of you watching, what do you think about the grading scale? Do you think it should be based on overall completion or when the churn kind of stabilizes? Because if we grade it by that and we keep to a 100% score, then unfortunately, Hollow Knight would still get an F. Because it doesn't really stabilize until, what we would say, like 45% of the player base. Eh, that could work as well, double. Have a two grades, one for stabilizing, one for completion. Which unfortunately, Hollow Knight would then get double F <laughs> from that. That could work, having at least two or three grades for it. And again, there's a reason why I'm considering episode one to be a pilot. To kind of work out the kinks and see what people think about how this concept would work. But yeah, that may be the better way to go. Having at least two, maybe three different metrics. So... Uh, let's go with uh, at least two for this episode. So the first one is going to be stabilizing. Because that is very important. Because at the stabilization point is when we know that the people who either pick this game up on a sale, people who just want to try it, maybe they weren't, true, maybe they weren't fans of platformers or Metroidvanias, or the people who found so many issues that they just said, nope, I'm out, I don't want to play this anymore. They left. And then we're left with the people who kind of stick through to the game. But... Mm, I don't know if... Nah, we can't do 100%ing. That is that is too limited. That is too hardcore. I, 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 th that's not going to really teach anyone anything about game design. Because once we get to 100%, the hardcore fans, they're not really going to be what we're looking at in terms of, you know, issues with the game. They don't care about issues with the game. They are, they 100%. They're the uh, super get good crowd. But at least stabilization and completion, I think, are going to be the two biggies. So if we look at stabilization, again, for Hollow Knight... And again, stabilization has to be progression-based. So, connection, protected, they do not count in this. But, we go from Soul Master, to Mantis Lord, to Dung Defender. Like, this is a stabilization right here. So, if that's the case, the game stabilizes at 42.7% of its fan base, which... Again, 42 on a grading scale would certainly be an F. Now, the second grade, how many people clear the game? Again, for that, I think I'm going to stick with my original metric. That you want at least 30% of your fan base. That would be considered a C to beat your game. Higher it would take us into B, A, and S range. Lower would be D, F. E, however you want to go, like, super fail. And if we go by that, then the first clear rate of Hollow Knight is 19.2%, which would be F range. So, unfortunately, when we talk about Hollow Knight in terms of how well it succeeded from a gameplay point of view, despite the praise, despite how well it kept people entertained past that churn rate. No, churn rate, wow. It would be considered a double F. Hi, everybody. After we finish the stream, uh, we had some discussions on the Discord. I think we came up with a way to at least try and give some abstract measurement. 
and what this all means for how well a game did. We're going to forego grading as unfortunately there's no real way to really give an accurate rating on something like this. Where with store pages, when we do for our Thursday shows, there is a legitimate line of what makes a store page bad, good, amazing, spectacular, and so on. But there are three key metrics that I want everyone to keep track of when we do these shows. So what we, we want to first look at is the churn rate. Specifically, when did things stabilize? Because that will tell us, of all the people who bought a game, what is kind of like the average number of those that we would consider to be fans? The people who are going to be somewhat likely to support the game and the developer in the future. Now, with Hollow Knight, the big thing to note is that the churn rate, or the rate at which things became stable, is pretty bad. It doesn't stabilize until 42.7 will round it up to 43 for even number. So what that tells us is that about 57% of the people who bought Hollow Knight did not even make it past the two hour mark. Probably even less than that when we look at this churn. And what that tells us is that within that first hour to an hour and a half of play, there were a lot of issues that newcomers, people wanting to like check out the game for the first time, or even established vets of the Metroidvania genre, did not want to deal with. And they left. And you want your civilization rate or your civilization percent to be as high as possible. Because from there, from that 43%, we can assume that the remaining players are those that they understood the core gameplay loop. Any major issues with the game, they were willing to either look aside or it didn't bother them. And that they understood what Hollow Knight was all about. The second mark we want to look at is 19% or the clear rate. And you can see right here, the Hollow Knight achievements at 19.2. Again, we are not talking about mastery which in hollow knight was apparently we could either say that was at 14.5 percent or 3.7 percent which both are those are actually really good in terms of people wanting to play all the way through to the end but the point that we're focusing on is how many of the core fan base or the stabilization point actually saw this game from beginning to end and when we, I did the quick math, it turned out to be about 44%, which is, I'll leave it up to you to decide. Again, we're not going to be grading things, but again, you want these three stats to be as high as possible because this will allow us to see, one, how many people who bought this game were willing to stick with it beyond just the initial impressions. Two, how many of those people saw the game through to the end? And three, what is the percentage of people that we can guarantee are going to be part of the core fan base of Hollow Knight? So what we consume out of the rating here is that about 44% of the people who learned Hollow Knight, not those who bought it, but those who played the game, they figured out the core gameplay loop, and they kind of got past the real Dark Souls moment, are going to be hardcore fans, and that's going to be the group that will most likely buy Silk Song, no questions asked, on day one. The lessons that we want to take away from this are what exactly drove people away, and what can we learn from this going forward? And again, this is why UI UX and the beginning of your game is so important, because you don't want to be losing what is this, about 26, maybe 25.1% of your fan base within about 30 minutes of playing your game. And these huge spikes in terms of drop-off occurring so early into the game, that's not good. What we can say is that for the people who this didn't bother them, 
that they were willing to overlook these issues or didn't bother them or they didn't even notice it, that it's actually not that bad. Again, when we start seeing major points of progression, but it's very low drop-off, that's good. And again, the longer a game is, the more drop-off inherently you're going to have. But the issue is that you don't want to just immediately, almost like completely kick out the majority of your fan base, which, or your consumer base, which as you can see, that's what happened here with Hollow Knight. And it's going to be very interesting to see when Silk Song comes out, whether or not these numbers are going to be similar. I have a feeling that if we review Silk Song, it's going to be a higher base because um, more people who are fans are going to buy that one as opposed to people, you know, just checking it out. They're just curious about what this game is, finding that they don't like it or something, you know, annoys them and then quitting. But what I'm thinking about in the future is that most likely the games we're going to review, they have to be beyond their major shelf life. I would say a game has to be at minimum, I would say three years old. Because there will always be people who will buy a game, you know, through a sale or they just discover it many years later after the fact. And that is going to change these numbers to some extent. But after three years of a game that's not live service, we can pretty much assume that the majority of the people who are interested in that game, interested to play it, I should say, are going to buy it. So that's all I wanted to say. Let me know what you think about these changes, the ratings, and all that in the comments down below. Again, really suggest games for me to review for a future show. Let me know. We're going. I'm thinking about making this maybe like once a month, depending upon how things go. Check out our Discord and Patreon as well, and come back for daily discussions on game design here and on game wisdom where is in the art and science of games until next time take care